Hello everyone, Paul Elam here with another episode from A Voice for Men. First, I have to apologize for what will be a long and circuitous two-part video. I'm going to wander a bit here, hopefully uh, in the tradition of Bernard Chapin's wandering cauldron of politically incorrect commentary, but I hope it does not prove to be too distracting. And a word of thanks also here to subscriber H.H. Fleury, I hope I pronounced that right, who made a comment to my recent video, Time to Abort Fatherhood at Will, which if you have not watched it, you should in order to get a better understanding of this talk. The point he made was an important one, that we should not just throw up our arms and accept that there is nothing we can do about the feminazi culture we live in. In that, I'm assuming he was regarding my call for reproductive rights for men as a defeatist response to women's domination over human reproduction, which is now a mainstay of the gynocracy. And it is a good point to raise, because in the still developmental men's movement, we continue to sort out whether we want to embrace traditional masculinity or would choose to redefine manhood in a way that reflects different values in accordance with a new socio-sexual world order. The fact is, and by fact I mean my opinion, that whether or not you want to return to traditional values or prefer to redefine masculinity in a new age, the path to get there is more or less the same. Men must face off with women on a very personal level and fight back in the gender war. And the only logical way to do that is to allow women to feel the full weight of equality in all its ugliness. It's kind of like opening the door so a feminazi can walk into the gas chamber she built for you. And we do that by recognizing that hanging on to the past alone is not a movement. It's just an unrewarded status quo at best, and at worst, a stagnation that results in ridiculous vulnerabilities that have been addressed by MRAs as long as there's been a movement. So I would offer that any movement for men, by the very definition of the word, involves men changing and drastically. The question is, what are we going to change, and how will we get there? You may have heard me say several times in my videos that if we want to see if women really want equality, the best way to do that is to give it to them. Let me rephrase that in a little bit different way. The best way to prove that most women cannot handle the weight and responsibility of equality is to give it to them. What we do now is play a completely disingenuous game. We watch most women and more than a few men make a lot of noise about how they embrace equality between the sexes. And then we watch the same people push social ideals, government programs, and draconian laws that demonstrate that women as a group can't cut it without men giving them a leg up. The problem is that society, your society, is used to denying all of this. And so to me, the real job of the MRA is to expose this lie in a way that people feel on a highly personal level. Case in point, many years ago, I met a woman through a mutual friend. We talked on the phone a few times and decided that we would go out to dinner on a date. It turned out to be an experience typical for the times. Within a few minutes of being seated in the restaurant, she told me in at least two different ways that her going out with me didn't mean that we were going to have sex. The next 45 minutes, she spent bashing her exes and telling me that she didn't need a man for anything. It was nothing new. It was a standard female shit test designed to see if she could put me in a lower status and to give her deference and control. I just nodded my head a lot and smiled and played the game. Toward the end of the dinner, she had loosened up quite a bit and was actually laughing and having a pretty good time. Then I told the waiter to bring us separate checks. She was fucking outraged. And I'm not exaggerating. She actually got so loud that heads were turning at tables around us. And of course, I just reminded her that she didn't need me and that I was supporting her stated independence by insisting we go Dutch. And after all, I had not asked her out. We had decided to go out mutually. Now the kicker to this and the really funny part was that she didn't have the money to cover her bill. So she had to call a friend to come out and bail her out of the jam she had gotten herself into. In other words, she had me sit through dinner listening to her lie about her independence, knowing she didn't even have the money to pay her way. And she fully expected that I would listen to all that and then pick up the tab anyway. I was actually kind of surprised at myself for doing what I did, but it was the first lesson for me with women that demonstrates the point I'm making here.
Not only was this woman unprepared to carry her weight equally, she was actually outraged at the idea that anyone would expect her to. And the whole time she was beating me up with how equal she was. Now just imagine a world full of men who would ask for separate checks. Even more realistically, just imagine enough men that would do it so that women in general would no longer feel comfortable with assuming that men would pay. What do you think would happen to all the I don't need a man bullshit rhetoric that men have, been, have grown accustomed to listening to from women? And let's take that out a little bit further. What would happen to the rate of unwanted pregnancies and abortions if men could and would simply walk away if they didn't want to be a father? How many lives do you imagine might be saved? How many women would begin to view their reproductive role with a little more respect and fucking humility versus it being a way to gather a man's sperm and his finances at the same time? We can apply this thinking to a lot of areas. Take the death penalty, for instance. I'm personally against it, or at least I'm against it until we figure out a way to know that we're killing the right person. And we're far from that. But what do you imagine would happen to the death penalty if we started giving the needle to women anywhere near as often as they deserve it? The death chambers would shut down overnight. What would happen to all the hubbub of women in the military if half the flag-draped coffins coming back from the Middle East had a woman's disfigured body in it? What would happen to our willingness to go to war for the wrong reasons? What would happen to women's sense of entitlement if, say, 30% of men refused to engage in any form of chivalry, if men refused to do anything for women at all simply because they were women? I think you'd see a collective change in attitude in women that you couldn't possibly imagine. The point here is, though, that if you want this stuff to change, the most efficient way to do it is to force women to carry the weight they already claim to be carrying but aren't. The weight that should have come with their modern rights but didn't. Now, realistically speaking, we're still not in a place that this will happen anytime soon. Far too many manginas, sellouts, chivalrous, alpha enablers, and beta lapdogs. But the fact is that our numbers are growing and theirs are shrinking as time goes by. And as the numbers of men who won't just take whatever bullshit is handed to them from the feminazi zeitgeist gets increasingly larger, we will see a couple of interesting things happen. Actually, we already are. Feminist has become a more and more unwelcome label in female circles. Also, we're hearing more and more women wax nostalgic about when men used to be men. I can't prove it, but I bet you that phony bitch I had dinner with was more careful with her mouth the next time she went out. Something about actually having to ante up for your words and deeds have a decidedly maturing effect, even when you don't want it to. And that's it for part one of Going to War with Women. I uh, hope you stay tuned for part two. As always, I hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.